This is uh, an interesting year as we head into the last year of the four-team playoff before we, we go to 12. Uh, we've got, you know, conference realignment, new leagues, and, uh, you know, the last year of the Big 12 is going to have 14 teams. Texas picked by the media to go number one. How do you see the Big 12 shaking out this year with 14 teams, the four new ones, and, and everybody who's come into this this mix? Wow, the Big 12. You know, in and, and- – taking you behind the scenes a little bit, David, to go back to when I did the first write through of the magazine this year, uh, I pretty much knew who I was picking in a, uh, nine of the conferences, there are nine of the 10 conferences out there. And I said, feel in pretty good shape. There's only one conference that I have a tough time finding one. I have a tough time for and find a 14 and guess what conference that was the big 12. Yeah, we'll betcha. <laughs> and uh, and let, let's look at the last two years. I mean, Baylor won the Big 12 two years ago, and, and TCU is playing in the national title game despite being picked in the middle of the Big 12. It used to be easy, and I even told Coach Leipold, uh, I said, Coach, you're, you're making it tough on me. I used to be able to at least pick Kansas last and then worry about the rest of the Big 12, and I can't even do that anymore because he's got Kansas so much improved. So it is a very tough conference to pick. But this year, uh, believe it or not, I went with Texas in Oklahoma as the two top teams and I didn't want to do that because I figured everybody's going to give them their best shot this year especially you know like a team like Texas which is the only one in the league of the top six teams that plays each of the other five a brutal schedule but talent wise if you look at my rankings on page 138 I've got them either first or tied for first in all eight positions they just are a very talented team despite the tough schedule and with Oklahoma uh, you know, their defense will be improved under Brett Venables. When I went over the squad with him, it was a major priority. And last year, he, is, he runs a very complex defense through the entire thing at him. Now they're in the second year of the systems. He brought in a lot of transfers. Offensively, Dylan Gabriel is back. And actually, in Vegas right now, Oklahoma is actually favored in 11 of their 12 games this year. So I do think Oklahoma and Texas are at the top. But I tell you what. If we if you if we had an hour to talk, I could make a case for Kansas State winning it. I could make a case for TCU winning it, Baylor winning it, Texas Tech winning it, Oklahoma State winning it, even UCF. And then how do you leave out in Iowa State, which was so much better than its final record last year? So I could make a case for about ten teams winning this thing. UCF is the is the one you mentioned that a lot of people think have the best odds of of competing you know, right away in the league, week in and week out. Is that because of they probably have the best combination today of coach and quarterback? Yeah, and and overall experience, too. We can't forget about that. They're actually number nine on my experience chart. And when I talked to Coach Malzahn, he said he's been preparing for the move to the Big 12 for two years now. He's been recruiting like they're moving to the Big 12. And I really like the talent they have. They got practically the whole unit back from last year, number nine on my experience chart. And last year, they lost a couple games. Remember, they went into Tulane and won. And I thought they controlled that game uh, pretty much. Without John Rice Plumley. they struggled against Tulane in the AAC title game or else they would have won it. Uh, Plumlee's back. They've got a better backup this year with Timmy McLean, who comes over from South Florida. So if any of those four newcomers are going to actually contend in the Big 12 this year, UCF is your team. Phil, we, we cover Baylor. We, we've covered them for years, day in and day out. Um, you know, as this show has grown, we've co- covered more and more teams. But when people ask me at Big 12 Media Days last week how, how Baylor's going to be, I um, – I struggle to tell them for sure. Usually I can get, you know, a handle on it, but they have so many new players and there's so many X factors. How do you break down the Bears coming off what was a really disappointing season last year? Yeah, and you know, last year they were coming they were the preseason favorites by the media to actually win the Big 12 last year and open up decent. They were 6 and 3. Um, it wasn't overwhelmed with the loss to BYU. Uh, that one the crowd I think played a major factor. Uh, and then the loss to Oklahoma State at home surprised me a little bit, and the loss at, at West Virginia. But still six and three after that win against Oklahoma, and there's just a poor finish to the year. Uh, I, I find Coach Aranda is one of the most fascinating coaches I talk to uh, each and every year, and I always learn a lot, not just about football, but maybe about life as well. And I think he's going to get this thing turned around this season. I mean, last year, two years ago, it seemed like when we got to the end of the year. 
Baylor expected to win those close games, and they did. And he pointed out to me that last year, maybe that same belief wasn't there, and maybe that had a little something to do with the one-point loss to TCU, with the close loss to Texas, where it was highly competitive in the fourth quarter. And uh, so I think that this year's Baylor team sets up better in that respect. They're stronger at quarterback. Blake Sheepman's going to be a vastly improved QB this year. I like bringing in Dominic Richardson to go along with Reese and Washington and Jones at running back. The offensive line, a bit of a question mark. That's probably my biggest question mark on the team. They're more athletic than they were last year in the offensive line, but they lack experience. How quickly that unit comes together, probably going to be the key. Now, the switch coordinators on defense, they're going to run a defensive scheme more in Dave Aranda's style of defense, which I like a lot because I think Dave Aranda was one of the best defensive coordinators out there. So I'm bullish on that. And then when you look at the schedule, you know, how many games – on their schedule, uh, Paul, do I have decided within three points? Utah, Texas, at UCF, Cincinnati, uh, Kansas State, TCU, all those games are winnable and also losable. So I agree with you. It's a tough team to forecast, but if I had to say, are they going to be improved or weaker? I'm definitely saying they're improved on last year. In fact, they make my most improved list uh, coming off a losing season. And I, I think this team could be a legitimate contender in the Big 12.